Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Welcome to episode 34 of the Craft to Career Podcast. I am Elizabeth Chapel, the host of the Craft to Career Show. And today I am speaking on a topic that I've had a lot of experience with and one that I strongly recommend to people who have an interest or think that they have something to offer as far as a membership goes. I'm going to dive into why you should consider offering a membership and how to offer one and create one that is attractive to buyers that brings value to people. Before we dive into that, I'm going to read the review for this week, which comes from Mara Quilt Designs. And this is actually a student of mine who's taken both of the Crafted Career course and the Quilt Pattern Writing course. And she says, Dear Elizabeth, even though I knew I would love your podcast, as I know you as a teacher, creative maker, and business owner, I stopped everything after listening to the Naysayers episode to write this review. Wow, this episode is so, so good and so needed. Thank you. From being your own biggest naysayer, as I am, to cultivating kindness and grace towards others who are doing it to you, to real useful tools that can help us deal with it all, I just love and deeply appreciate it. Don't get me wrong, I also love all the other episodes with maybe more technical or practical advice some listening to twice and taking notes, but I feel that this naysayers episode is like a foundation for everything. At least it is to me. Thank you so much. I'm off to listen to more as I quilt the latest quilt. Maria at Mara, M-A-R-A, Quilt Designs. Maria, thank you for this review. This comes from an episode uh, from one of the very beginning episodes to the naysayers. And it's one that I actually need to go back and listen to myself from time to time as maybe someone gets down, including yourself, about yourself, or someone else says something that just rubs you the wrong way or says, I don't know, are you sure you can do this? anything like that, this episode, it is really foundational. A lot of business success comes from our headspace and where we are mentally. And it takes work to be able to to be in a good headspace. So I'm so glad that that episode resonated with you. Now let's dive into memberships. So first of all, what is a membership? A membership is anything where you're creating a community or a platform where people sign up and they are automatically paying to be a part of this group. Now, what you offer in the membership can look so different from person to person, industry to industry. How often a person pays can change. Uh, I generally think of like a monthly payment, but you could do quarterly, you could do yearly, weekly, daily, whatever, however often and frequent that membership renews. And let's just take a look at the memberships that are out there in the world. This is such a great business model that everyone is jumping on board. So if you listen to Apple Music, Uh, that's a membership. Amazon Prime, you pay to join that membership. It's a yearly thing. Um, Apple Music is a monthly thing. Netflix is a membership. Every network out there has started their own uh, Disney, Disney Plus. Uh, Everyone sees what a great business model this is from small companies to the big giant companies. Because generally, if you don't have this auto renew payment, you are having to go out and really market and grab people's attention for every sale that you are getting. That's a cost to you of your time, your money, your resources. You have to put out a lot of energy and effort for every single sale. With a membership, you do that once, you put in the marketing and the energy to get the sale once, and then they automatically renew that payment. The key is, however, once you get them in the membership to make it worth their time and money so that they don't cancel. So we'll, we'll dive into that. So that's the main benefit of a membership is that you don't always have to constantly consistently find new people to come in just to, to get money for your work. It is an auto renew. It's a very beautiful system. 
But again, you have to really bring value or your customers are not going to stay. And then I want to talk about a platform. If you want to offer a membership, the question is, well, how do I do that? Like, what would that look like on my website? Who, who would host that? And I want to chat about Kajabi. It's K-A-J-A-B-I. And I have an affiliate link if you are interested in trying out Kajabi or using that to offer a membership. I love it. So I used to do a physical subscription box. That was a membership for a physical box. And I used CrateJoy. It's C-R-A-T-E. And that was good. It was it was the best. I switched to a few different things. However, I don't love the physical subscription box. It's a lot of physical labor and upfront costs. And you have to sell every last item. And guess it, there's a lot that goes into that physical subscription box that's risky, time-consuming, and expensive. Uh, the digital membership for me has been just amazing. For one, all these people who had been buying my physical box, all of a sudden now we are friends. We get to interact and I get to see them and meet them. And it's it's brought so much more satisfaction in my life that I didn't even know that I was missing. Plus, you take away all the stress of having to pack a physical box and buy the items and guess what the influx of customers would be month to month. Um, so I now use Kajabi. So Kajabi, I really like because, well, one of the main pros of this is they don't take a percentage of your sale. And so let's say you have a million members in your membership. You're paying the same as if you had one member in your membership. So it really rewards a person for having success in their business. It doesn't punish you for growth. And that that's everyone's goal, right? Is to grow and to create a product that people really enjoy and like. Um, the cost of Kajabi, I use their most popular, it's the growth payment membership, and it's $159 a month. And I know when people are starting out, they're like, ah, oh, that's too much. That's so much money. But I promise you, if you are doing a membership and doing it right, it's so worth the cost. You will get your money back if you are doing it right. And I'm going to share tips on how to do it right. And if you decide you want to give Kajabi a try, if you use my affiliate link, which is in the show notes, it's quilterscandy.com. It's under episode 34, the podcast episode of membership. I share videos of how to set up your membership using Kajabi. And I also offer a one-on-one, -on -one, a one-hour help with me going in and helping you set up your membership. So if that's something you're interested in, you need to use my affiliate link to get that. But that is something that I happily offer because I love Kajabi. And it is once you know how to go in and set everything up, which I will help you with, it's very easy to make a professional looking membership that's seamless for your customers. The only thing that has been tricky for my customers in my membership is how to cancel their membership, which of all the things to be tricky, that's the one you want. So I will also show you how to make a little video tutorial to show people how to update their payment and how to pause, we'll call it pause, not cancel, how to pause their membership if they are needing or wanting to do that. So those are things that I offer if you are wanting to try out Kajabi for your membership platform. Again, you have to use my affiliate link to sign up for that to get my help with it. Um, but if you do, then, then yes, I am totally happy to help you with that. So now let's talk about the nuts and bolts of a membership. What, what, what to create, how to create it so that it's a good value and so that it's successful. So first, think about what you want to offer. And I'm going to be speaking in terms of quilting and what I'm familiar with. But things that are attractive to customers are a community, creating a place where people can come and connect. We live in a world that is very technology. You know, we don't get as much human interaction. Plus, introduce the quilting community. And it's even more so where we are often on our own, quilting in our own rooms, listening, you know, it's, it's isolating. And so to create a space where you can find like-minded people, where you can come and talk about your craft and geek out with each other and have an audience that cares and is excited and has friends for you, that, that adds a lot of value. 
And then think if you want to provide lessons or tutorials or a pattern or what, what can you offer that you can produce consistent content that would be fun for people. So think about that. And then think about if there's a unique approach. I have a student from my pattern writing course, my original pattern writing course, Mary, Mary Go Rounds. She has a membership and she is black and she is really creating a platform and a community to promote and encourage women of color to have a voice in the quilting community, to, to highlight and promote their work and a community to come and celebrate that together. And that's a really unique community that's going to, it's not attractive for everyone, but that's what you want. That is what you want. You want a niche that is going to be like, oh, that is not for me for some people. And because then when you find your people, it is so for them, that is definitely something that appeals to them. So think of an audience. There's someone I know who does a paper piecing. She teaches how to do paper piecing. You want to find your specific little niche and and tailor to that and make it very clear what you're offering in this membership. If it's just here is a quilting community, that that is vague. While other outsiders who aren't quilters might be like, oh yeah, it's quilting. You want to get even more narrow. So like my membership that I offer, the Quilters Candy membership, I offer a brand new pattern every month from modern quilt pattern designers that you can't get anywhere else. If you're in the membership, you are getting this before anyone else. And that's the main draw is getting top designers who are modern quilters. You're going to get their pattern before anyone else. There's other things added in there to add value, but that's the main little niche there. And then when you have figured out what you want to offer in your membership, I would plan out a few months, make sure that this is something you can, I mean, the, the stress of it can be every month. If you are saying, I'm going to provide this, then you need to provide that. So you cannot fall behind. You know, if you're going to, people are paying you money and it's on auto renew, you have got to come through on what your offer is. So make sure you are prepared for that and that you can really follow through with that. And then think about the access that your members have. Is this something that like in the Quilters Candy membership, because I'm offering patterns of other designers, I, once someone joins, you don't get access to the things that were offered in the past. Those aren't my property. They're the property of the designers. And so for my members, when you join, you only get what's available that month moving forward. But some memberships, they have a whole library full of all of the patterns and everything that they've released in the past. And so when people join, they get access to all of the past things, all of the videos and all of that. So that's something to think about as well. Uh, how is that going to look when people join your membership? Do they get access to all the things in the past or only moving forward? Something else to think about for a membership is letting your members work towards something, either creating a path to success, like you're going to start here and then you're going to go here and here's what that path looks like or having them work towards a kind of reward or a goal. So with the Quilters Candy membership, and sorry to keep using this, but that is my membership, so it's the one I know the best. Members in the Quilters Candy membership, after they complete six patterns, they've made six patterns that are only offered in the membership, they can choose a custom bundle of fabric and a pattern. They get a pattern that I don't release anywhere else. So this is their kind of reward and incentive to not only be in the membership, but to participate, to make things in the membership and post about it. And now I actually am just about to add, I had someone, I've been thinking I need to offer something. We've gotten to the point where people are in the membership beyond that six months. And after they reach that six month point, it's like, well, now what? I feel like I need a reward. So I have just decided on, and I'm super excited. I guess I'll announce it here first. I have reached out to a custom jeweler and everyone in my membership is a woman. So, so I'm tailoring it to my audience and we have a custom necklace that has a cute, uh, it's like a a pendant, a gold pendant. So it's a gold chain with a little circle pendant and stamped on it is a little pair of scissors. And it's adorable. I, mine is on the way. And I, as soon as I get it, I'm going to be showing it and sharing about that. But after 14 makes, so it goes from six 
to 14, after someone makes 14 patterns in the membership, they will get this necklace and it's free. It will be mailed to the members and shipped to them and they will have that. And that will be the only way that I will be offering and providing this necklace is for those who have made 14 projects within the membership. So it's fun to think about ways to incentivize your members to participate and to be involved and reward them for that. It's also really fun to encourage interactions with members so that it's not just a solo thing that they're doing on their own, but that they get to see each other and meet each other, maybe do a swap, or I like to offer Zoom calls where we hop on and members can chat and share what they're working on. I also sometimes invite guests to come and they're paid guests. And it is once you know you're earning money, it is worth it to invest in that membership and to pay to offer things that are of value that they cannot find somewhere else. So we have guests come and speak about like we had Mary Fonz come who was so fun. And she talked about Quilt Folk Magazine, which she was the editor of for years. And it was just a surprising delight. It was so, so fun. Um, we also offer, I do challenges this month right now that I'm recording this, we're doing the hand quilting challenge where I got on a video with the members, recorded that for those who couldn't make it, showed how to hand quilt and answered questions. And then for this entire month, members get to hand quilt a project of their choice, a quilt binding, a pillow, whatever it might be. And there are prizes. There are three prizes for whoever is posting about this uh, at the end of the month, actually the very beginning of next month. I will look at everyone who's posted and then draw names for the prizes. So it's fun to do these things where people are posting about it on social media. They're encouraged with prizes and interactions. Uh, we also offer a hot seat in the membership where every month we highlight a member or two and show pictures and we get to know those members. We have a monthly show and tell where members submit pictures of what they've created that month. We have the Zoom meetups. We did a swap in the past. So just creating fun ways for members to engage with each other and get to know each other, where if they do leave the membership, that's sad for them to have to leave that and not have access to that anymore. And once you have this going, you want to advertise. You want to make sure to get the word out about your membership. And don't worry about sounding like, oh, yuck, people are going to be so tired of hearing this. They really aren't. And if they are tired of hearing about it, they are not your ideal customer. So your ideal customer will keep hearing about this and will keep thinking, oh, I should join that. I should join that. So keep talking about it. And fun ways to do that is to highlight members. Like I'm thinking Instagram here. You're going to highlight members and what they're making and doing. You're going to share about the guests that you have or all the things in the membership. You just want to constantly keep sharing that and talking about it so that it's always on people's minds and invite your members to share about it as well. It's really powerful to have affiliates, which again, if you use Kajabi and sign up for my, with my affiliate link, I will show you how to do that. But Kajabi has a built-in affiliate system and it's super easy for you to invite your members who are already paying to invite their friends to come and join the membership and they can earn money to do that. So again, if you sign up with my affiliate link, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. But affiliates is really powerful because the, those are your actual members and customers who do love the product. And they're coming from someone else besides you, the owner, who's obviously going to be telling people how great it is. But to have that come from a customer who is paying and is saying, yeah, actually, it really is great. That builds a lot of credibility. And so having an affiliate program, I think, is definitely something to consider when trying to grow your membership. I also want to talk about when to open and close the membership. So I've tried both. I had heard that it was really best to only open your membership at certain times and then close the doors because there's a thing about scarcity. You know, if you see something for sale and you know that you only have one day to buy it, you are so much more likely to buy it because that opportunity goes away. If, however, you see something and you like, you might save it, put it in your cart and think about it, but I'll come back later. And so I tried that at first. I did, let's do, we only open every so often. 
And I would all see my numbers go up, of course, when I opened the membership. And then throughout the few months, it would go down, go down, go down, open the door, it would go up. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to keep the doors open all the time. I'd love to see the numbers not go down. I just want it to be consistent. That did not work the way I wanted it to. The numbers went down, 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 and um, didn't go back up because I never had a big open. And so, um, and we're not talking down, 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 like people didn't like it, but there's a natural like, well, it's time for me to go. I need to save money, that type of a thing. Um, So I went back to the open and close and it works. It works for a few reasons. One, that scarcity thing that I just talked about. But two, if people are in the membership and they're liking it, if they think, well, I'm just going to leave this month, but I'll come back the month after. If you don't leave that option there, if you leave, you can't just come back whenever you want. People are less likely to leave your membership if they like it. So this is the key, making a membership that is a value that people really like. And even for myself, I, on that topic of creating something people like, I am consistently looking at the membership. I, every time someone leaves the membership, I ask them for feedback. Why, you know, thank you so much for being part of the membership. I would love to hear your feedback on your experience. Is there anything that would make you likely to join again in the future? And generally it's a life circumstance has come or something's happened financially, but every once in a while I'll get a little tidbit of, well, I really like the smaller patterns or Like I just mentioned, I finished the six months and I got my reward and there's not a next reward. And so I felt like there was nothing to work towards. And that was motivation for me to really evaluate the membership and, okay, I should really offer something for that next level, that next milestone for them. So look for feedback from people if and when they leave your membership. And it happens. There's, you know, I've left Netflix before and then come back and it's not that your product isn't great. It's just, well, I'm going to save a little money right now. Um, and that's okay. So don't freak out when people leave, but do look at, at your membership, really evaluate it. What are people, and you can't please everyone. You know, I've had some people say, I only want to be in that membership if we had full size patterns every month. So I tried offering full size patterns. The majority of the members got overwhelmed by that. So I have to really evaluate, do I want to offer full-size patterns? Do I go back and forth, which is where I'm at now? It's sometimes full-size, sometimes smaller. Um, But really sticking to what you want to offer that membership and and not just being like tossed about with every feedback that you get. Like, well, okay, then I should try this and I should try this. Just realize that your product won't be for everyone, uh, but look for overall trends with feedback that you're getting. And it's a, even a good idea to ask your members who are in the membership, what are you liking most about the membership right now? Uh, what do you, what would you love to see different? Cause they're there and they're, they're paying and they're happy, but they would probably give you some great feedback that you could apply. And then last, I want to talk about what to charge for your membership. So do not undercharge. <laughs> I talked to someone recently who wanted to start a membership and she was like, I don't feel like I could charge more than $5 a month. I was like, Oh no, 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 no. You need to charge more than $5 a month. It, for whatever reason, the quilting industry seems to be, it's an interesting thing. And now I'm speaking to quilters in particular. Well, this could be applicable to anyone, but in the quilting industry, people are spending so much money in the quilting industry, but it's mostly on fabric. It tends to be that, and quilt pattern designers are afraid to charge more for their quilt patterns. It's an industry of mostly women, and that might be why, because women are, you know, because of culture and the history, we're afraid to ask for what we are worth and to put a price on our time and our skills and value ourselves. Um, But know that outside of the quilting industry, memberships are usually minimum $27 a month. Within the quilting industry, I don't know of a single membership that costs that much. The most I've seen is $20 a month. So just know that we, in this industry, in general, okay, in general, like I said, most memberships are $27 a month that are like, you know, a small business owner providing content every month. Um, with that said, I started my membership at $10 a month. And it's a good idea to start with an introductory price. You reward the people who are taking a chance on you, who come when you are just starting, and that can be a price that they are grandfathered in. So it 
you should raise your price eventually. This also helps to really encourage people to sign up at the beginning because whatever price you're offering, it will go up and you can let people know that. So if you want the lowest price, sign up now. And then the second time that you open registration or open membership doors, that price goes up. That also encourages people who signed up at first to stay so that they, if they leave, they lose that price. But if they stay, they forever get that price of $10 a month or whatever you choose to go with at first. But I really encourage you to not go under $10 because you need to really value what you're putting out there. Know that what you're putting out there is of value to people. Don't undermine your work and your value and, and your time. Um, so that's something to consider, but also then consider raising that price as you move forward. And especially depending how you model it, but you're going to get better. You're going to get feedback. You're going to see what's working, what's not working. It's your membership will get better over time. And as with any product that's out there and you'll have ebbs and flows where you'll try something and realize, oh, that didn't really resonate, but that's valuable. That is valuable information. So as you move forward, your membership does get better and it's of more value and that price should reflect that. So that's another thing to consider is how much you charge people. And it's also nice, let's say you do a monthly charge. It's also a good idea to offer a yearly where someone can sign up for a year and they, let's say they get two months free, but you give them a discount for signing up for a year because one, they're investing more of their money up front. They are taking a bigger gamble on you and your membership and that they're going to enjoy it. And you want to reward them for that. You're going to secure that you get a bigger payment. And in return, you want to reward them for that by giving them a discount. So that's something else to consider and think about. So in summary, memberships are a wonderful business option. If that's something that you are interested in and think that you can really commit to because as I mentioned before people are giving you their money and in return you need to be very clear with what they are getting let them know exactly what's included in that membership and then you need to provide what you've said you're going to provide that has to be something that you can commit to if not then don't do the membership do a standalone product but if you can commit to doing a membership and sticking to what you're offering and make that offer unique and valuable, it's a wonderful business model. It's just, and it's fun. It's rewarding. You get to really know your members and become friends with them. And it's, it's just a very rewarding and fun way to do business. So again, if you are interested in trying Kajabi, be sure to check out my affiliate link because when you sign up with Kajabi with that affiliate link, I help you set up your membership. This also works for courses, but that's a whole nother topic. But Kajabi is great if you want to offer courses or classes. Um, but if you use my affiliate link, I will help you give you video tutorials on how to use Kajabi. And I will give you a one-on-one -on -one for one hour of helping you set up affiliates or answering any questions that you have. So, And if you want to check out a membership, I mean, one of the best things that I've ever done is join a membership so that I know what it looks like and what I like. Uh, in January, I will be opening the Quilters Candy membership and you can check that out and see what it's all about, see what it offers and or even just go to my sales page. If you go to quilterscandy.com at the top, look under membership and learn more. You can look at my sales page and see what is offered in there, how I present that to customers and see even if you're just wanting to create a sales page, see what's on that sales page. So I'm excited for those of you who are interested in doing a membership. I do really encourage it. If you have specific questions about a membership, you can leave a review and ask your questions or send me a DM. And if there's enough questions, I might do a follow-up podcast on this with those questions. And also, if a membership or a course or a creative business is what you are all about, which you probably are if you're on this podcast and listening, in February, the first week of February, I will be opening my Craft to Career course. That is an eight-week course where I dive really deep into helping you build your creative business. We will dive deep into marketing strategies, growing a following, an email list, all of the things that you need that we talk about here on the podcast, but this is just the surface. There is so much more 
that will really help you get a jump start on your creative business. Or if you have a business and you're just stagnant, you're not seeing the kind of growth that you want, then come and join me in the Craft to Career course. I would love to have you there to help you, to meet you, to have that personable one-on-one and group interactions where we can really get your business going to the next level. So look for that at the beginning of February. And next week, we'll be back with a brand new episode of the Craft to Career podcast. Until then, have a wonderful week. 